I bet you all weren't expecting to see the greatest fighting style ever, the chair throwing style of fighting. Yeah, this is my impressions on the 15th episode of To Your Eternity. So let's jump into it. As this episode opens up, obviously we have Fushi is a little bit upset over the idea that he's realizing that Corona is unfortunately gone and he's kind of trying to deal with this. The Beholder's kind of trying to push him the idea that he needs to stop, uh, I guess, fretting over every death that he kind of experiences. But of course, that still kind of sticks with him. Tanari tries to pull him back into the group for a feast, but of course, he's still kind of pushing her away as well. He doesn't trust her because obviously the whole reason why he and uh, Poron is actually there is because of her. This is where I'm kind of starting to get a little bit frustrated with, with Tanari's character. She's kind of all over the place, obviously very childish, but at the same time, very kind of obnoxious, just emotions jumping all over, acting like she's upset, acting like she's obsessed with him, acting like it, it just, it just, you can't really make or break this character. But we still get a little insight into her and the idea that her father is, of course, the reason why she's there and her father's gone. And she's kind of equating herself to a little bit of to Fushi and the idea that Fushi... Even though she's like, you know, he, she is a killer. He's like, well, I don't care. I'm, I want to protect her. I want to get her out of here. And again, she's kind of equating this to um, her situation. And then this kind of leads into the next battle, which we have him fighting this one guy. Uh, he tries not to kill him, but the crowd decides that they want to kill him instead. And after he falls and the, the battle ends, he ends up running into him with his brother later on. It was the point which Fushi's like, you know, if I can, I will, I'll get you off this island. You know, the thing that he's wanting to do, which is to protect his brother, uh, they're also the case where they are part of a family that was, you know, prisoners. So he and his brother aren't necessarily criminals. They're just on the island. So they have the triangle mark, not the circle. What kind of follows this is kind of interesting as we have the islanders at this point are fed up with Fushi. They're like, why are you here? You know, this... One of the ladies puts it as um, every victor needs a victim. So the idea of him being immortal doesn't set well with their custom. Their custom is the idea that one person falls for another one to rise. And in the case of an immortal, there's no there's no victim and there's no victor here. He has to either kill or he needs to be killed. And I thought that was kind of a, one of those kind of morbid oddities about it. And at first I'm like, this is really dumb. <laughs> this is a dumb conversation. But at the same time, it makes sense to these people. Their whole custom, their whole life has been driven around this Colosseum, and the concept of this victim requires a, or this victor requires a victim mentality, and the idea that him being there, is just wrong. I mean, it, it is it is easy to kind of put in the idea that in immortal, this is kind of one sided. Is there nobody's going to be this immortal? This this makes no sense. This is kind of dumb. Why would he even bother having a match at that point? But it's still the idea of essentially stepping on what all they what they've always known their entire life they've always known this mentality and this throws a huge wrench into it of course kind of following this argument one of them striking tonari and then them knocking that person out we have the beholder shows up and says well just before this beholder actually showed up and said return to the boy they're coming and it's, just, it's kind of great because you kind of realize right after this when he gets attacked by the knocker he takes away gugu and the Beholder knew this. The Beholder was like, he knows this is the first time he's been Gugu since he's been on this island. And if the Knocker was nearby, he was probably waiting for the moment that he would turn into Gugu so that he can take away Gugu. Because this last battle, Gugu was the reason why he lost. Gugu heated him up to the point where he, you know, basically exploded. So obviously, in order to beat Fushi, he's going to need to take away Gugu. So I did, like, I did like the idea that, you know, even the Beholder's like, you know, you need to return back to the boy, which is, he's re referencing Fushi. You need to re return back to the boy and get out of that form because he's going to take that form. So yeah, following him taking this form, all-out battle happens. Everybody joins in to help him defeat, defeat this bear. Um, this is the point in which we have him basically utilizing uh, Perona's form in order to shoot better. Um, also <laughs> creates explosive arrows, which obviously apparently really excites one of the one of the uh, team members but yeah they, they successfully knock it out and this is like a really nice little emotional moment right here because we really have him you know getting emotional over the idea that he just re he got march back and he got of course also got back the the bear but getting back march and obviously getting back gugu meant a lot to him and it was it's kind of really cool that it, it still has an emotional pull every single time something like this happens where he loses somebody and he's trying to remember them or he regains something it always seems to pull off that emotion like 
yeah, the moment that March comes on, on the screen, you get a little emotional in the idea that, yes, she's he's got her back. Um, but I'm assuming this is all kind of raring up to what's coming up ahead, which is going to be an all-out craziness. Which, again, gets me back to my argument that I made last episode's impression, which I, again, was the case with this one. Very, very lacking in the animation department once again. Again, everything moved. Everything kept going. So it's not terrible. Um, just kind of underwhelming, I guess, is the, is the way to put it. I, I'm i really hoping that there's something big coming up animation-wise that's going to really kind of prove the necessity for how a lot of this this particular episode and the prior episode felt very lacking in the animation department. I mean, just having this bear and these goofy little kind of copy-pasted explosions happening on him over and over again was just kind of a little lacking. The fight with the the guy was a little bit good, uh, but again, kind of felt a little lacking as well. So again, I hope that they, they're doing all right, and this is not a sign that the rest of this entire season of, what, five more episodes is going to be very lacking but uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm excited. I almost forgot. He did have a moment where he talked to Pioran. Uh, got to kind of finally find out where she was at. And she's kind of like, she comes to realization through his conversation that obviously Pirana is gone. Um, but she kind of worked in a nice little way. You know, she probably died protecting somebody. Uh, she probably died an honorable death. This idea of honoring her death rather than mourning the death, I guess, is really the kind of key point there. And the, this kind of push that, Pioran has on Pirana's death and the idea that, you know, basically honor her death by continuing to do what she wanted to do, protect people. And this will probably give him that extra boost he needs to protect others. And obviously this kind of seems echo when he uh, beats this guy and then says that he'll, you know, get him off the island. But yeah, that's about it. That's all that's in this episode. Not too much to cover, but uh, still excited for the next episode. Not really, actually, because <laughs> as we see in the preview, we have Hayase showing up, so... Yay, here we go. <laughs> it's going to be annoying, you know it. Uh, we'll probably find out that she killed Perona, and we'll probably find out that she's mass murdering a ton of people, and that she's super evil, and she's obsessed with them, and then... Bleh. <laughs> but yeah, looking forward to the next one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you thought of the episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can, and you all take care.